Uh, I'm just going to talk uh, uh, about uh, the, the what uh, and then the, the why and the how. And the what is, uh, is pure advantage. And, and pure advantage is, and this is, is a, it's a different take, I think, uh, but pure advantage is about wealth. It's about wealth creation. It's about wealth creation for New Zealand. And the fact is you, you cannot distribute uh, wealth unless you generate it first. And New Zealand as a country needs to generate wealth so that we can invest in education and healthcare and the environment. Uh, we need to do that in infrastructure as well. We, we need to generate that wealth to invest. And I think one of the original, uh, the original thinking behind this was, was uh, here's an opportunity where New Zealand as a country, using the competitive advantages we have, can generate the wealth that as a country we need. And, and that, that, that's the, what, what does new, uh, pure advantage stand for? The why is, is that there's an unbelievable opportunity out there, uh, a, a, a massive opportunity in terms of what you can broadly describe as being green growth. And green growth covers lots of different things. And it doesn't matter whether you think there's a trillion dollars of opportunity or six trillion dollars of opportunity. The fact is it's big and it's going to happen. And as Chris Liddell mentioned, you've got population growth going to seven, eight, nine billion people. You absolutely no. Uh, that we have to get more efficient at the way we operate this planet. There's no two ways about it. So, so it is going to happen. It is, it, it is going to happen. And, and one of the great things in business is trying to work out what is going to happen and then plan for it. And as a country, that's what we should be doing as well. And, and the reason we should be doing it is that we already have some of the competitive advantages that we need to take, take um, advantage of the opportunities that is going to come from green growth. Now, green growth isn't just about uh, uh, climate change and global warming. Um, I mean, there's no one in our group that doesn't understand what is happening uh, out there in term, terms of global warming and climate change and the fact that it is, a, it is the, the biggest threat to the planet. But it's not necessarily the way governments think. It's not necessarily the way governments think on a global basis. And very often, the, the drivers for them are, are much more powerful domestically than they are uh, internationally. But, but some of the big drivers still relate to, to that overall top topic. But when you split them down a bit, that's when it gets even more interesting from, from an opportunity point of view. And that's when you move into things like um, energy efficiency, energy security, uh, how you cope with population growth and resource scarcity. And some of the big drivers out there uh, <coughs> relate to those facets. Uh, and, and I'll give you two examples, <coughs> both in Asia. Well, f first in Korea. So Korea. Um, at the moment is about 97% uh, dependent on fossil fuels, uh, in, uh, importation of fossil fuels for its, its energy mix. <coughs> and, and they realise it's not a sustainable position, uh, and there, there are several reasons behind it, don't have time to go into it all, but they will spend $85 billion uh, uh, as part of their green plan, uh, the national green plan, to rectify that situation and, as they say, rebalance the economy. The push for them happened when, uh, when oil almost hit uh, $140 a barrel, close to $150 a barrel. They were spending $140 billion US dollars on importing uh, oil. And that's the, their total exports are about $400 billion. In New Zealand, we spend about $6 billion New Zealand dollars importing oil. Our total meat receipts from the meat industry are about $5 billion. So we're still a, a billion shy just to cover our, our fuel bills. You know, we can throw in the wine industry and we, we, we get pretty close to the six. But, but the reality was the Koreans said this is not a sustainable position, we have to do something about it and they, created, they have created a plan, it is the law, they've signed off on the basic law and they spend $85 billion and a lot more on top of that once the private sector uh, um, starts, to generate, uh, or starts to generate returns from investment and reinvest. So it's a, a very big numbers. The interesting thing from New Zealand's point of view is that a lot of that money will be spent on water, water management and also waste management. These are sort of industry skills that New Zealand has. China is the other big one. So the Chinese ratified their 12 5 year plan in March of this year. <coughs> China also has a, an enormous issue uh, around energy efficiency, population growth and so on. All the sorts of issues that, that we know about. Under the 12 5 year plan they've identified eight key areas which they plan to grow as part of the economy. It's the future for China. Three of those eight happen to relate, relate to the environment. They're going to spend five trillion RMB over the next five years, over the 12 5 year plan period, investing in these areas. That's about ten times what the Koreans are going to spend. 
two of the big areas that they're spending on are water and forestry. Water, because they don't have enough of it, but they don't use it very well. So in China, you have about 30% of all their rivers uh, and 50% of their lakes are graded as too polluted to use for industrial use or agriculture. But, and, and there are about 160 cities, I think, in China where you don't have access to fresh drinking water. But they're they, 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 they irrigate incredibly intensively because they don't have the land mass to feed the population, so they, they use an enormous amount of water to, to irrigate. But here in a country where they have unbelievable water shortages, half of all the water they use for irrigation never gets, on to, never gets to the crops it's intended for. So what are they, what are they going to do about that? Of the five trillion, three trillion has been spent rebalancing the environment, okay? Focusing on issues like that. <coughs> now, funnily enough, New Zealand has skills in water. We don't use them that well in places, but actually we, we do use them relatively well and relative to other places, we actually have some good skills we can take, we can export. And those skills that doesn't need new technology. You know, we actually know how to irrigate, we actually know how to transfer water. We actually can do some of those things. We need to do it better, and the better we do it here, the more able we will be to take advantage of those opportunities. Where I think at times the argument uh, and the discussion on what New Zealand's opportunities tend to fall down is that when people talk about clean energy, talk about green growth, they automatically think about solar panels and wind turbines and so on, and yet so much of this, particularly when it comes to energy efficiency, resource efficiency, comes back to relatively basic technologies that we already have and where New Zealand already has competitive advantages there. Particularly if we look at our clean green credentials. And that's the, the last bit of the equation, is the clean and green credentials that we have because from pure advantages point of view, we believe that is our competitive advantage. But we have to do something about those credentials because at the moment we have them, but they're not quite as polished as they should be. You know, everyone knows uh, that uh, uh, um, under Yale's survey, the EPI survey, we've slipped from number one to number 15. Now the other great New Zealand brand, or one of the other great New Zealand brands, Icebreaker of course is the other great New Zealand brand, but one of the eight other great New Zealand brands is the All Blacks. <coughs> you imagine their credibility. Now, they went from number one in the world to number 15. Their only mantra is about being the very best in the world. 15 would not cut it. You know? Imagine running into the World Cup now and the All Blacks are ranked number 15 in the world. There's no country in the world that is as reliant as New Zealand is and sells the image as much as New Zealand does in terms of its clean and green credentials. So what are we doing ranked at number 15 in the world on the most publicised environmental index? The only place that we should be is number one. So what What's Pure Advantage going to do about this? Pure Advantage wants to be a catalyst to get New Zealand moving back in the right direction. Okay, and a, and, and a catalyst because we need to raise the level of debate around this. When I hear the when I hear discussion around this, invariably it goes back to it's going to cost us too much, or we'll be at a competitive disadvantage, or no one else is doing it. That's one of the, that's one of the, the easy ones. I gave you two examples before of the fact that other people are doing it, and they're doing it in really, really big numbers. So we want to act as a catalyst, and we want to work. Uh, we want to work right across the spectrum in New Zealand in terms of, of being a catalyst to get the level of debate up and work out how New Zealand can best uh, take advantage of the opportunities that are available to us. We've got to publish. Uh, a study very shortly, uh, which is New Zealand's position in the green race. Uh, we're then going to uh, publish a, a macroeconomic study, <coughs> which will be much better than the little examples that I just gave you in terms of what those global opportunities are. And, and, um, and, and that, that will be part of that study will be ready um, by about November of this year, a uh, full study ready early next year. But that's the macro opportunities available to New Zealand and then the particular um, areas where it makes sense for New Zealand to, to, um, to get aligned with those opportunities. And the third is, goes back to the group that we've got here, one of the big criticisms of, of any of these um, groups that get together from time to time in New Zealand is there's never enough of how you're going to do it. And, and one of the great things with the, with the group that we've put together here in Pure Advantage is 
mainly with the exception of me, is that they have been incredibly successful about building businesses, of, 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 of starting out there and saying, actually, I've got a vision, I'm going to go and do something about it. You know, I, I, I want to get there. And, and so we're also going to, um, going to put out a roadmap as to how New Zealand should do it. And I think the group that we've got together pretty capable of putting together roadmaps in terms of how to be successful. And what we want you to do is, uh, is support us, uh, get involved in that discussion, raise the level of debate, let's do something about it, because it's an unbelievable opportunity for New Zealand, and this is about the opportunity. And we can't afford to miss it. We really can't. So get on board with Pure Advantage, pureadvantage.org. I've even learnt a little bit from my daughters how to use Facebook, so I can see how the Facebook page will work. But get on to it. <coughs> Get active, I know a lot of you are already, but get really active in the discussion and let's make a difference to New Zealand. Thanks.